All right, well, can you guys uh, hear and see me okay? All right, well, listen, uh, good morning, buenos dias. Welcome to another uh, summer session here at Southwestern College. Uh, I'm, uh, uh, I'm going to be the guy who's uh, basically running the show for these next seven weeks. So I'm Professor Cañedo, or Professor Cañedo, or you can call me uh, uh, <clears throat> Mr. Cañedo, Señor Cañedo, Profesor, El Maestro, El Profesor, that, uh, any, any of those types of uh, labels is... Uh, perfectly fine and um, I'm really happy and excited to be with you guys for these next uh, seven weeks as we uh, begin to examine what um, uh, 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 what goes into the experience uh, for the uh, Mexican American uh, uh, for uh, the Mexican American experience in, in terms of uh, the early stages of, uh, of Mexican American history of, uh, of Chicano history so in these seven weeks we'll be examining everything from the uh, uh, early stages of life in Mesoamerica and some of the dominant cultures, of course, the Olmecs, the Maya, um, uh, Del Teocan, and of course the Aztecs. Those will be major uh, elements for the, about the first, uh, first, third, first a couple of weeks of the class. And then, of course, we'll get on to more of the uh, traditions which make up, uh, which make up, you might say, the Mestizo experience. Of course, the arrival of the Europeans, namely the Spaniards. So we'll see quite a bit of those guys about the uh, middle part of the. Uh, middle part of, of, of the session, and then in the final few weeks, we'll begin to uh, uh, underscore differences between the uh, uh, the, the Mexican, Hispanic, uh, Chicano experience uh, with respect to the North American experience, namely the United States. So you might say, uh, so in other words, the uh, English Protestant co components. So this class is going to have uh, quite a bit of coverage of uh, elements of uh, uh, the early parts of United States history. So for those of you who've taken many, many of the uh, of the U.S. history classes, uh, I think that's history one uh, one, uh, one hundred here at Southwestern. I'm all uh, uh, I'm at different uh, campuses besides Southwestern, so I tend to forget what the numbers are in terms of uh, what early U.S. history is. But I did uh, one of those classes uh, quite a few years ago, and I believe, if I remember correctly, it was history one hundred. So if you took that, then uh, a lot of the things we'll see in the last third of the class, but the final two two and a half weeks, uh, we're going to get into a, a quite quite a bit of. That. Bit of that too. So basically, this class is going to be, you might say, a compilation, a, a mixture, a, a, a hodgepodge, for lack of a better term, of various elements which make up the Chicano experience, uh, but in looking at native influences, uh, Spanish influences, uh, English influences, uh, and of course, uh, uh, and of course, American influences with respect to American institutions, uh, including such things as, of course, the uh, U.S. Constitution, the Bill of Rights, the, uh, uh, the Declaration of Independence, and of course, uh, some of the legacies of the presidents from, uh, of course, the, the usual suspects, Jefferson Adams, going up until, uh, until the presidencies of uh, James Polk and Andrew Jackson. I'd say those two guys, uh, more than anything, are the ones who really uh, help to set the stage uh, in which uh, U.S.-Mexico uh, relations have been uh, kind of a, uh, I guess you could say, a uh, mixed bag, for lack of a better term, over the last, uh, over the last uh, uh, century, uh, uh, a couple of couple of centuries, and I would say that it's the things that both uh, Polk and Jackson did, which essentially underscore all of that. So a big, uh, a lot of coverage of Polk, and really a lot of coverage about Jackson, and uh, I'll talk about quite a bit of uh, all those things in uh, in subsequent videos in this in these first couple of weeks of, of, of the session. Uh, but what I'm here to do today is uh, is just to tell a little bit about myself. I'll say a couple quick things about, about about the class. I'm not going to go over all the details about the class itself in terms of the assignments, the percentages, uh, the quizzes, all of that stuff. Of course, you can look at that right now uh, as you start to explore the class uh, right, uh, right, of course, uh, here in Blackboard. Of course, check out the syllabus, check out the schedule, look over the assignment uh, guidelines and directions, download all the worksheets. Uh, all of that fun stuff, but in my next video, which I'll have uh, coming up for you coming up tomorrow and uh, on, on Tuesday, Tuesday the 16th, I'll begin to go into more detail about what the class is, is about. But in the meantime, let me spend these next few minutes talking a little bit more about myself, uh, say things about uh, El Profesor's ba background and interests, uh, things of, of that nature, and uh, we'll save discussion for talking about the nuts and bolts of the class in these next, uh, these next few videos. So, uh, Besides the announcements, the announcements will be a regular feature in the class. I would say for these next seven weeks, expect about at least three announcements per, per, per week. And then as we get toward, toward the end of July, once the class starts to wrap up, don't be surprised if you see announcements coming on a daily basis as we start to wrap things up. 
Uh, but, but, but for sure, as we get things going in the class, expect announcements at least three times a week. Uh, so, uh, and these announcements will, will definitely give you a sense of, what, uh, of what's going on on a regular basis. And within the announcements here on Blackboard, I will embed m m many videos uh, uh, such as this one, this one that you're looking at right now. Uh, all, the, all the videos, many of the videos will be within the announcements section. So if you're uh, looking at the class uh, on the, uh, that is, if, if you've seen the uh, announcement through email, you're probably not seeing the announcement. So definitely make it a point to, uh, 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 to, uh, to check the announcements uh, from your laptop, from, from your desktop. And I believe the announcements might, uh, uh, I don't know if they're showing up on your, uh, on, on your tablets or your mobile devices. So if you don't see, I'm sorry, not the announcement, but, but if you don't see my video, if you don't see the videos, uh, on mobile devices, then definitely uh, uh, get to a uh, a more uh, uh, I guess uh, a more uh, uh, older or, or clunkier device, namely a laptop or a desktop, to get a better look at to better to get a better look at at, uh, at, at the videos. But of course, all the announcements, uh, all the stuff I have written, you can see those easily, no matter what platform you're using, whether it's uh, uh, a desktop. A lap, laptop or a or, or a mobile device, uh, a, a, a Android, uh, Gal Galaxy, uh, I, iPad, uh, I, iPhone. You get the idea. All right. Let me say a few things about uh, about myself. I'll, I'll quickly show you uh, the textbook for the class, and then tomorrow I'll tell you more about what the class is all about with the uh, uh, nuts and bolts, so to speak. All right. Well, uh, as I mentioned, I'm Professor Canelo. Oscar Canelo is, is Oscar, Can Oscar Canelo is, is my, my my full name. I've been at Southwestern off and on since uh, 1997. Actually, I, I started uh, just as, as I was finishing up my master of my master's studies at San Diego State in Latin American Studies. Uh, Professor Vic Victor Chavez, of course, who's uh, still at Southwestern, Victor was my, my main mentor. He basically taught me the ropes those first couple of years at Southwestern. And even though I haven't seen him too much because I do most of my classes online instead of on campus, I definitely don't owe a great of uh, a uh, bit of a, a debt of gratitude to um, uh, Senor Chavez for really uh, helping me to get going in this uh, teaching teaching business. Uh, but uh, uh, for about the past five years, I've been uh, I've been doing uh, pretty much exclusively the on the online sections of this class, the 141, and also the 142 class. I've had a few on campus uh, sections uh, he, he, here here and there, and I'm actually going to be on campus coming up in, in the fall. With a uh, late, uh, with with a late uh, evening, uh, like a, I think 6:30 to 10:20. Uh, I have to double check the schedule for the fall, uh, but I'll be back with with a late, uh, with 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 a short-term eight-week uh, session uh, on on the main campus for, uh, coming up in the in the fall semester. Uh, as for 142, I sh hope I should have a 142 class coming up in the uh, next spring, spring of 16. So if you need a 142, uh, just keep checking the schedule, and most likely I'll have a 142 section coming up. For next uh, ne next spring, all right. Besides being at uh, at uh, Southwestern, I've been at Grossmont uh, since uh, also the late 1990s. So I do mostly the U.S. history classes and also the history of California. I've done a few sections of the history of America, but for the most part, it's the U.S. classes and history of California also online that I've been doing quite quite a bit of that. And I'm also at Mesa College too. You'll find me there doing the Chicano Studies 141B. I'm sorry, 141A which is the equivalent of a 141 here. So their sequence of Chicano studies, 141 uh, A and B, is the same thing as Southwestern's with the history mass 141 and 142. So even though numbers, are, 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 numbers and letters are, are different, it's essentially the same thing that I'm doing at, uh, at Mesa College, uh, also, uh, also uh, uh, online. And uh, like, with, like with here at Southwestern, I do uh, a few on-campus sections here and there. And in fact, uh, like with Southwestern this fall, I've got a section of, uh, of the Chicano Studies 141A coming up also, uh, 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 also on, 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 on campus for the fall semester. All right, in terms of my education background, uh, um, as I, uh, my master's is in Latin American Studies, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, and now it's in San Diego State, so I spent much of the uh, much of the much of the mid '90s and worked uh, there there at SDSU. Before that, I was at UCSD. My uh, my BA is actually in uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in anthropology, um, uh, which was really quite quite helpful because quite a few classes that I had there at UCSD had elements of archaeology and uh, and the classes looked at Mesoamerican societies, Mesoamerican cultures like the Olmecs, the Teotihuacan, the Toltecs, and of course and of course the the, the Aztecs. 
And uh, before UCSD, um, my, uh, my, my, my school was actually, uh, actually in, in, in the South Bay. Uh, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a product of Hilltop, Hilltop High School, go, go Lancers. And, uh, 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 and, and as, for, as for elementary school, I'm actually from, from National City. So I was born and raised in the National City. I went to a Kimball Elementary School way, way back in the days when, uh, uh, when I think uh, Jimmy Carter was, 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 was president, Ger Gerald Ford. Uh, and I think I was starting school when uh, Richard Nixon was, was president and getting into uh, quite a bit of trouble with uh, respect to Watergate. Uh, I don't cover Mr. Nixon here, but I do a lot, lot of that in my Grossmont classes. Um, but I mentioned, yes, I was born and raised in National City, uh, so definitely a South Bay native, but I actually don't live in the South Bay anymore. I, I'm, not, I'm not even in San Diego County. I'm up the road in Riverside County in a little uh, area known as French Valley, which is roughly uh, north of Temecula, uh, east of Mur Murrieta, and south of, of, south of, of Hemet, south of Win Winchester. So it's a little patch of uh, Riverside County that's been growing gradually in terms of uh, new houses, uh, new uh, uh, New, new schools are coming in. So roughly, I'm in an area which is pretty close to where Lake Skinner is, is, is lo lo located. So any, any of you who go into, uh, say, uh, say Hemet, or you, or you take the back route to get to the, uh, to the 60, on your way to the uh, desert cities like uh, Palm Springs, uh, Indian Wells, uh, and of course, uh, Indio, maybe those of you who, have, who might have gone to the Coachella Festival. If you take in the 79, I live right off the 79. Uh, close to where the little little uh, French Valley Airport is lo located. So, um, so thankfully, uh, so uh, while I'm in Riverside County, it, it's it's great for me because uh, I don't have to worry too much about uh, about the commute going into uh, National City or San Diego or, or Al Cajon for Grossmont College. Um, but uh, but like I said, I, I still do a few on campus sections here and there. So I don't I don't mind doing a uh, one a one one section. Uh, Maybe one or two classes per per, per semester, uh, but of course, uh, but but of course, it's uh, uh, it's it's much much easier for me here in Riverside County to do a lot of these uh, a lot of these uh, online classes, and I seem to be doing a pretty good job. My uh, uh, the deans and all my all my schools seem to think I'm doing an okay job. So uh, so I'll, I'll keep keep things going, and uh, and for these next few semesters, next few years, uh, uh, to keep this uh, uh, routine where the majority of my classes are online. But from time to time, I'll do an on-campus uh, section uh, every uh, 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 maybe a couple per per school year. Okay. Uh, as for other things in terms of my interests, outside interests besides uh, 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 besides uh, teaching, um, uh, first off, uh, in terms of uh, sports, and you might have noticed uh, my shirt here. Yes, uh, I'm a de definitely big big hockey fan. So the Stanley Cup is just about wrapping up. So. I'm definitely not too happy that the Ducks got knocked out by, by knocked out by the Blackhawks, but they had a pretty good season. Uh, they got a little bit closer in the playoffs than in previous years, so maybe next year they'll finally uh, get over the hump and make it to the Stanley Cup final. But I like other teams too in the East, like the Red Wings and that and 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 the Rangers. In terms of baseball, uh, I must confess, to everybody, I used to like the Padres many years ago when I was younger, but now that I'm up here in Riverside County and uh, uh, and the uh, and the TV, it's Time Warner, so it's they have all the Dodgers stuff. I started following the Dodgers uh, right after I moved out here, and uh, hate to say, hate to admit it, but I'm definitely a, a, a Dodgers fan now. So, uh, but I'm not going to be too too obnoxious and, and say things. Ah, Padres are no good. They're a bunch of bums and goons and thugs. Blah blah blah. So I'm not going to do any of that stuff uh, 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 here. So just be thankful I'm not a Raiders fan because I'm sure those of you who are Chargers fans. So find out anybody oh my god I'm sort of a Raider fan uh, well, let, 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 let's 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 get let's go call, call, call the Dean and governing board and have it have them kicked out so no I'm not a Raiders fan uh, uh, I don't really follow the Chargers that much I actually like 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 the Lions I like a lot of the Detroit teams I've been to Detroit uh, I, I make uh, regular visits there but maybe uh, uh, every year every other year uh, and the Lions uh, uh, is a team that that I've been following for the past few. Even when they had that really bad season, when they didn't win any games, uh, I was I was following them uh, since since then. In terms of basketball, uh, I do like the Clippers, but I'm not a big fan of basketball that much. So I'll watch a few games here and there. But for the most part, when it comes to watching sports, hockey's number one. Baseball's a strong number two. I watch football, uh, especially if it's if it's the, the playoffs, and rarely will will I watch will I watch basketball. The other sport I do watch quite a bit is uh, international soccer, especially when it's tournaments like like like, like the World Cup. So I'm um, a big fan of Argentina. I've been a fan of them since uh, the days when uh, even before Maradona, when when, when guys like uh, Mario Kempes and Daniel Basarela were, were playing. So we're talking about way way back in the late 1970s. So. Uh, 
even though they didn't win against Germany, they had a pretty strong showing. So maybe uh, maybe next time for, uh, for when they go to Russia in 2018, they'll have a, a pretty uh, a pretty good uh, a pretty good team. Uh, other interests, uh, music-wise, my interest in music uh, kind of all over the map. But well, since I'm from uh, since um, I'm a product of the 1980s, a high school, so all the rock and roll, the heavy metal, so it was, it was a Van Halen, Motley Crue, Def Leppard, Iron Maiden, Scorpions, uh, uh, all, all of that, all of that, 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 that stuff. Uh, uh, that was stuff I definitely grew up with, so I'm a big fan of that, but also like a lot of the older 1970s uh, rock and even some of the uh, R&B stuff, so whether it was a Rush, Aerosmith, ZZ Top, the Eagles, Deep Purple, or uh, you know, Boskeg, Steely Dan, Earth, Wind, and Fire. I like all of that. And even my interests go further back in terms of some of the jazz that came out after World War II. So we're talking about guys like uh, Miles Davis, John Coltrane, uh, Stan Getz, uh, all, 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 all of that that, that stuff. Uh, uh, th those are things that I listen to quite quite a bit as quite a bit as, as well. And uh, uh, as for anything else, oh, uh, 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 here at my house I have uh, quite a few. Uh, uh, for my friends, I've got uh, I've got a cocker spaniel and, and three three uh, three three cats. So, in some of the videos that, that I'll make for you later in the in the session, don't be surprised if one of my uh, uh, one of my feline friends decides to come in and uh, and say say hello and uh, uh, and uh, and tell us how he or she is is doing uh, that type of thing. And let's see, anything else I should mention about myself? Um, I think it's pretty much it in terms of in terms of the time time being. But basically, I wanted to use this video to give you a sense of. Uh, uh, who I am, what El Profesor is all about, and of course what he what he looks like and what he sounds like. Because I think it's it's important when you have these online classes that are from the uh, instructor point of view to let everybody know uh, what you're all about uh, in term in terms of uh, uh, in terms of your your interests, but also also visual and 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 audio too. Because uh, I think uh, in the early days of teaching online, it was a little bit rough in that with the technology. Uh, I really couldn't get to know the students per se in terms of providing audio, video. I mean, those early classes I had back in 2003, 2004 were very primitive on so many levels. Uh, I was just lucky enough if uh, uh, if my students were able to send their assignments without the uh, connections uh, uh, getting dropped, because I think way back in uh, even uh, uh, even then, about 03, 04, 05, 05 uh, people were still using dial-up uh, to get the information across. Thankfully, those days are uh, are pretty much uh, ancient history, uh, so to speak. Uh, but I'm not knowing about history. Let me quickly say one one quick thing about the books because uh, uh, again, I will say more about the nuts and bolts of the class coming up in tomorrow's video. But in terms of books, let me tell you what you need to get uh, r right off the bat. This is the Ancient Mexico book by Jacqueline Lathrop. I've been using this book quite a bit. Uh, over the past few years, I'm not going to make any changes soon. So this is the 10th edition. Uh, looks like she's got one of the uh, one of the Maya uh, Maya temples uh, temples here on the cover. So uh, make sure you get this. But I know it can be a bit pricey. But if you find the 9th edition, which has a black cover at a cheaper price, 9th edition is fine. So go ahead and get the 9th edition. Don't get anything before that because there are too many changes. Uh, between the 8th and 9th edition. So again, my recommendation is get the 10th edition, but if it's too too expensive, you want to get the 9th edition, uh, get that. That's absolutely fine. So again, either 9th or 10th editions of Ancient Mexico, get these as soon as possible because we're starting the readings of this week. Now, it's a bit of a dicier story with the uh, between the conquest because uh, Mike Cordellis, my, my colleague at, uh, at, at Mesa College, uh, Mike's been working on this book for many years and he made many changes between the 4th and 5th editions. So if you want to get the 4th edition or earlier between the Conquest, please don't do that. Mike made a lot of changes between the 4th and 5th editions. He dropped some articles and added new articles. This collection of articles, so it's a few things that Mike wrote by himself, but many of uh, things written by other scholars from uh, California, from Texas, New Mexico, uh, uh, <clears throat> those places. So in other words, if you get the fourth edition, which has a yellow cover, you're going to struggle badly on the, on some of the quizzes. So please don't get the fourth edition, and definitely don't get anything earlier than than, than that. Simply put, uh, the information is totally different in the earliest editions compared to the fifth. So please get the fifth edition. I know it can be a bit pricey. Uh, see if you can find some used copies uh, uh, on the uh, Southwestern Books Southwestern Bookstore, or go across the street to uh, uh, over to I think it's uh, Otai Books. I think uh, Sean is, is, is the uh, is, is the guy that uh, that's in charge charge of that. So try to find some used copies of uh, 
the uh, uh, between the conquest fifth edition, but if, if no, uh, uh, and even though it's pricey, definitely sell it back as soon as possible and get some of your money back because I'm not going to make any changes in the, between the conquest. So, uh, so if you sell your books back uh, uh, at the end of the session, the, the students in the fall semester uh, they'll, most, uh, uh, they'll, they'll most likely benefit because I'm going to be keeping between the conquest for the fall semester as, as well. So again. Be sure to get the fifth edition of this book. Don't get any, anything before before that. But for ancient Mexico, you've got more flexibility. So again, try to get the tenth. But if you but if you want to get the ninth instead with a black and red cover, that's fine too. But nothing before before the ninth, ninth and tenth for ancient Mexico, that's fine. Uh, all your other readings are in Blackboard in PDF format, uh, outlines, and there's there's a there's movies in there. And uh, and I'm going to post uh, post some videos in which I preview some of the readings starting next week. So lo a lot all the other stuff for the class is located within within Blackboard within the uh, weekly module section. <clears throat> all right, everyone. So 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 that's it. Uh, that's what uh, that's what El Profesor is, is all about. So right now, what I want you to do is besides getting the uh, books, go into the uh, into into the discussion forum section. Go to the introductions area and uh, and introduce yourself. Uh, tell me uh, and the rest and your classmates a little bit of who you are, uh, why, why you're in, in this class, your interests, blah, blah, blah. So essentially, some of the main things I, I talk about in terms of uh, my background, my interests, uh, sports, uh, music, all of that, please feel free to, to share those similar uh, interests in the discussion board. All right, so that's it from here. That's it from my little uh, 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 headquarters, my uh, uh, my. Uh, 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 my my world domination head head, head headquarters as a as a Stewie Griffin from Family Guy would, would pr probably say, uh, um, but I'll be back tomorrow with a uh, with a uh, with a uh, video in which I describe everything about the class. I'll talk about the syllabus, the schedule, the assignments, uh, the quizzes, anything else about the about the class, uh, uh, all all of that. So. Uh, if you have a question about the class right now, please hold off on that until the end of the week because after this next after uh, this up next video, I'll most likely have another video toward the end of the week. So wait until the end of the week. Uh, uh, all my announcements and videos shall clear up anything about the class. So if you're still confused about anything in the class so far, uh, then definitely start checking with me around maybe uh, a Thursday or Friday. Uh, start getting into the habit of using the messages for professor section in in Blackboard. So. Uh, you can keep using my email for these first for this first week. That that's fine. My Southwestern a, a, a account, it's right there on the, on the syllabus. But definitely by the end of the week and into next week, start getting into the habit of using messages for professor in Blackboard. That's the best way in which I uh, which I can guarantee that you'll get a rapid response uh, about anything pertaining to the class. Okay, well that's it from here. That's it from uh, from El Profesor Cañedo. Uh, so uh, you guys have a have a have a good good morning this first day of of, uh, of the session. Uh, good luck in taking care of everything, all the bureaucratic and administrative mumbo jumbo. And I'll be back with you guys tomorrow, in which I talk start talking a little bit more about what the class is all about.